In the year 2025, the Philippines unveiled a game-changing weapon system that stunned military analysts across the world, the Kydlat X, also known as Lightning X. This isn't just another missile. This is a symbol of technological evolution, regional defense ambition, and a strategic leap that places the Philippines in a new military category. Today, on the Reverend Line, we'll take you deep into the story of this powerful system and its design, capabilities, the reason behind its development, and why it's causing such a stir in Southeast Asia and beyond. Let's start with the origins of the Kydlat X. For decades, the Philippines relied primarily on imported defense systems from allies like the United States, South Korea, and European nations. But the shifting dynamics of regional security, rising tensions in the South China Sea, and the increased militarization of nearby waters forced the Philippine government to rethink its defense policy. It wasn't just about having defensive capabilities Anna Maria it was about having incredible deterrence. And deterrence requires modern precision strike weapons, not just aging systems from previous generations. In early 2023, the Philippine Department of National Defense quietly greenlit Project Kydlat. The mission? Develop an indigenous missile system that could protect the archipelago, reach maritime threats beyond the horizon, and send a clear message to anyone thinking of violating Philippine sovereignty. By late 2025, the first Kydlat X missile test was conducted at a secret location off Palawan. The results? Success beyond expectations. So, what makes the Kydlat X so special? First, let's talk about range. Official sources state the Kydlat X can reach up to 500 kilometers, but some defense analysts believe the real range could be even higher in classified configurations. This allows the Philippines to target hostile warships, missile launchers, or even land-based threats far beyond its traditional operational boundaries. For the first time, the Philippine military has the power to strike before being struck. Now, consider speed. Kide Latex isn't just a cruise missile it's a hybrid design. It combines supersonic cruise at Mach 2.5 with a terminal phase booster that pushes its final approach close to hypersonic speeds, making it extremely difficult to intercept. Once it locks onto its target, evasive maneuvers are nearly impossible for enemy ships or defense systems. This speed gives Kide Latex a serious edge over many older missile systems in the region. The guidance system of the Kide Latex uses a combination of inertial navigation, GPS, and active radar homing. But here's where it gets futuristic, the missile also employs AI-assisted target recognition. That means even in complex environments where multiple ships or decoys are present to the Kide Latex can autonomously identify the highest value target and adjust mid-flight. Imagine a missile that thinks, learns and chooses its own target in real time. That's what makes the Kide Latex more than just a weapon or it's a smart weapon. The warhead of the Kide Latex has dual capability. It can carry a high explosive fragmentation charge designed to destroy warships or coastal installations, but it can also be configured for anti-bunker or strategic infrastructure strikes. There's even speculation about electronic warfare payloads being tested, though official sources have neither confirmed nor denied this. In terms of launch platforms, the Kide Latex is flexible. It can be launched from land-based mobile launchers, making it difficult to track and neutralize before launch. But it can also be deployed from naval vessels, giving the Philippine Navy its first real offensive strike capability at sea. In the near future, there are plans to integrate it with air launch platforms, possibly adapting it for the FA-50PH fighter jets or future drones. This would give the Philippines a true multi-domain missile for sea land, sea, and air. Let's talk for a moment about why this missile matters. For decades, 
the Philippines has been viewed as a relatively soft power in Southeast Asia when it comes to military capabilities. The nation focused on humanitarian missions, disaster response, and defensive patrols. But as regional tensions intensified, especially over territorial disputes in the West Philippine Sea, the need for credible military deterrence became urgent. The Kaid Latex is the answer to that need. It sends a message that the Philippines is no longer just relying on alliances so it is building its own teeth. What's interesting is how the Kaid Latex fits into a broader geopolitical picture. The United States and Japan provided indirect support for the project through joint training programs and technological cooperation, but the missile itself is proudly Filipino. It's a product of the country's growing defense industry, with contributions from Filipino engineers, scientists, and private sector innovators. This isn't just a military victory, it's a technological milestone for the Philippines. But of course, the Kaid Latex comes with controversy. Some regional observers have criticized the missile program, claiming it could spark an arms race in Southeast Asia. Neighboring countries are watching closely. China, in particular, has expressed concerns through diplomatic channels, though the Philippine government has defended its right to self defense. Military analysts argue that with so many nations modernizing their missile arsenals, the Philippines has simply joined the game it can no longer afford to sit out. Another concern is the potential for proliferation. Will the Kaid Latex technology remain strictly controlled? Will it eventually be exported to other friendly nations, or remain exclusive to the Philippine Armed Forces? As of now, the government insists the missile is for national use only and there are no plans to sell it abroad. Let's take a closer look at the impact this missile could have in real world scenarios. Imagine a hostile naval group moving into Philippine waters threatening resource exploration or occupying disputed islands. In the past, the Philippines would have had limited options of diplomatic protests, coast guard standoffs, or relying on allies. But with Kaid Latex, the calculus changes. The threat of precision missile strikes gives Manila real leverage in negotiations and a credible second strike capability if deterrence fails. The Kaid Latex also improves joint operations. It can work seamlessly with surveillance drones, radar systems, and satellite data to create a unified targeting network. This means faster response times and smarter engagements. In modern warfare, speed of information is just as important as speed of weapons, and the Kaid Latex program recognizes this. So, what's next for the Kaid Latex? The Philippine government plans to produce at least 150 units by the end of 2026, with more advanced variants already in the prototype phase. There's talk of a longer-range version, possibly the Kaid Latex R, and rumors of a stealth variant optimized for radar evasion. For now, the Kaid Latex stands as a symbol of progress. It's not just about missiles, it's about national pride technological independence, and the right to defend one's own territory. In 2025, the Philippines didn't just build a missile. It built a message. That message is loud, clear, and it moves at Mach 2.5. This is the Reverend Line. Stay tuned for more in-depth defense updates, technology breakdowns, and military analysis. If you enjoyed this deep dive, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you never miss a story from the front lines of innovation.